Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Curtis with Fossil Crates, and I'm here to say, come on down to DinosaurTrips.com, where you get to hang out with me for almost 10 days as we travel across the southwestern United States, looking at museums and wonderful natural history objects on Route 66 million years ago. And the first museum we visit is my own museum, the Arizona Museum of Natural History. It's in my backyard. And there you're going to see four holotypes. And these holotypes, well, what's a holotype? Let's start there. A holotype is the name bearing bone. The holotype is the bone that when you find something and you wonder if you found a Majungasaurus, you run over and compare your skull fragment to the Majungasaurus and think, is this the same animal or not? So holotypes are the most important bones of any particular taxon because it is the official, this is the dinosaur. And Arizona Museum of Natural History happens to have four dinosaurs that are holotypes that were all found in New Mexico all around 92 million years ago, just across the Arizona border in the Moreno Hills Formation in Lake Cretaceous. And to go over them real quick, we have a Zuni Ceratops. Zuni Ceratops is a Ceratopsian. It has beautiful brow horns. We have multiples of them. Um, one of the cool features is the smaller ones have single rooted teeth and the older ones have double rooted teeth. That's amazing. The animal itself was a shock. None of us thought we would find a Ceratopsian 92 million years old that well developed. And it makes us wonder if the big Ceratopsians like Triceratops ancestors didn't actually come from the southwestern United States and migrate north as opposed to coming across from Asia. The animal is extremely uh, important to the phylogeny of Ceratopsians. One of the cool things was there was an error made in that. They didn't know it was an error in 2010 when they published Nothronychus. The holotype of Zuni Ceratops used to have a squamosal, it's a bone in the skull, part of the frill. And they realized as they found more bones and did more preparation that they had a Therizinosaur. And that squamosal is actually part of the pelvis of Nothronychus. So the holotype of Nothronychus includes vertebrae as well as this pelvic bone, the ischium, as well as skull parts. And so they were able to find, again, no one was looking for a Therizinosaur 90 some million years ago in the southwestern United States. These are Asian animals. Why and how did it get here? It makes you wonder where the Therizinosaurus come from. Did they start in North America and evolve outwards and go across the land bridge the other way? If so, where are the fossils? That's why we keep looking though. So Therizinosaurus, we have the holotype material and it's really cool to see. And in the Zuni Ceratops paper, they referenced way back in 1998, this Solirosaur, which in some places was called Suski Tyrannus. It was also called the Dromaeosaur we had this little meat-eating dinosaur. It wasn't until 2019 that it was all sorted out. And oh my goodness, again, 90 some million years ago, no one was looking for a tyrannosaur id or tyrannosaur oid, technically, to be in New Mexico to have the arctometatarsalian condition. That's this cool condition where it has a triangle bone. This condition allows it to be mobile. And Suski Tyrannus showed that it's a Tyrannosauroid, and Tyrannosaurs started small. We have them in the Southwest, and some Tyrannosaur researchers would argue that they evolved in the Southwest, and they moved their way north, and in 26 million years or so, you get T-Rex. But in between, there's a whole bunch of Tyrannosaurs in New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Mexico. So it's a hotbed of activity. But the holotype is here. It's part of the snout, skull material, limb bones, vertebrae, beautifully di preserved, displayed in the holotype room. Absolutely awesome, and you'll get to see it. And then the last one that few people know of is Jawadi. Jawadi was named fairly recently, I think 2010. It's a hadrosauroid. It's an iguanodontian. So it's known from a skull material that we were able to learn that this thing is very primitive. And we were surprised because you find them over on the other side of the Western Interior Seaway in Alabama area, and you find some in Colorado, but this particular animal with this morphology was unexpected. And so Arizona Museum of Natural History's research, funny enough, is right across the border in New Mexico, and those rocks continue to produce new items. 
I would bet there's another probably half a dozen new animals waiting to be named that as holotypes will most likely end up in the Arizona Museum of Natural History. So we're super excited to have those. And if you go on the dinosaurtrips.com, we'll go back in the back, we'll meet the curator, we'll go ahead and talk to the scientists that are studying these bones right now, and you'll see a host of other critters like our Arizona Tyrannosaur T. Now, aside from holotypes, of course we have some really cool specimens. A Quetzalcoatlus, the big, largest flying creature ever, mounted like it's a killer giraffe. We have Tarbosaurus, which is the Mongolian T-Rex cousin, and it's extremely rare to see. Of course, we have a T-Rex skull, Triceratops. We've got a Camarasaurus, the Jurassic sauropods that I love. We have Ceratopsians galore. We have non-dinosaurs all over the place in the grounds. Amazing content, absolutely delightful museum to visit. I look forward to hanging out with you, telling stories all along the way. So come down, check it out. There's a few seats left as of when I shot this right before Valentine's Day. Uh, act fast as the seats are running out. Dinosaurtrips.com, route 66 million years ago. It not only it is in Arizona, we go to the Petrified Forest. We'll see some more holotypes there. We're then going to go across through the Grand Canyon, because you got to stop there. And then you're going to move into California, where we're going to hopefully see the actual holotype bones of Dynamo Terror Dynasties, this savage tyrannosaur, also from New Mexico, uh, as well as numerous mammoths and mastodons. We'll go to the ALF Museum, and you will see what will become a holotype someday of a Mississippian Triceratops relative. Brand new to science, first ceratopsian tooth from Mississippi on the other side of the Western Interior Seaway. And you'll get to see it yourself. And then from there, we're going to go to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, which is the granddaddy of West Coast Museums. Unbelievable exhibits. You have Mementosaurus, Carnotaurus is on display, multiple Tyrannosaurus skeletons. There's tons of other animals to see. A pregnant plesiosaur. What? Amazing. And... We're going to round it out at La Brea Tar Pits, where I don't know if there's any holotypes, but you're going to see mind-blowing numbers of skeletons of dire wolves. You're going to see saber-toothed tigers. It is one of my favorite museums in all the land. So this dinosaurtrips.com with the Route 66 million years ago is chock full of fun and delight along the way. We'll experience Route 66. We'll drive through Peach Springs. We'll stop off at Joshua Tree National Park. We're going to spend time at the Grand Canyon and the Geology Museum therein. And we're going to go through the Painted Desert. So it's going to be an utterly delightful trip. I'll be along the whole way talking about the Southwestern paleontology, geology, uh, anthropology, and general history. I'm born and raised out here. I've spent most of my life poking around these parts. I am excited to hang out with like-minded adventurers. And if your spouse might not be so excited in the dinosaurs, we have, we're have we going to be staying in nice hotels with nice food, doing fun activities that aren't all museum-related, including a full day at Universal Studios. Who better go to Jurassic Park with? Sign up today at dinosaurtrips.com. Look for the Route 66 Million Years Ago section. My name is Dr. Brian Curtis, a.k.a. Dr. BC, with Fossil Crates, saying thank you kindly. Adios.